Welcome to my channel, Dr. Munshi Nasser Skeleton. How are you, my dear learners? In this video, we are going to talk about the effect size in a nutshell. In my previous videos, I have discussed a lot of important things about meta-analysis. In my future videos, I will share each and every effect size with real and practical data. So, upcoming all the several tutorials, this is the first of them. Okay? So, without wasting any time, let's get started. My dear learners, I am going to introduce two important books to understand the meta-analysis effect size. First book that I am going to introduce is the introduction to meta-analysis. This is, in my opinion, one of the best book to understand the effect sizes. Now, in, pre in my previous videos, I have discussed about how to apply effect sizes and different type of effect size information and everything, right? In this video, you will get all those effect size in three different categories. The first category is FX size based on means. Okay. FX size based on means is basically there are three types of FX size you can calculate based on the means. And FX size is one of the single most important criteria to find out your overall study FX size in your meta analysis. So it is very important that in your study, which is the research question, what is the aims and objective of your research, based on that you will select your FX size. The first of kind, FX size based on means, you will get there are three types of mean based FX size. Number one is unstandardized mean difference. Very simple one, it's just like there are two groups, okay, and you calculate, let's say one is control group and the other one is the treatment group and both the groups you collect the mean of each and every studies and then based on that studies mean you will get the difference between the two means and find out what is the main effect size you calculate the effect size based on the mean difference of the two groups that's it and it's it's a very easy and simple one if the scale of measurement are equal for all the groups that we're talking about but what happened in the actual real life scenario? In the real life scenario, you will not find a similar type of scale size. You will find a different scale size, different type of uh, measurement of means, right? In that case, the best way to calculate the mean difference is the standardized mean difference. In this case, one is called the Cohen D and the Hedges G. Okay. So let's get, let's, let's see what are the things that it, it talks about in this particular case. So standardized mean difference is very simple as you can see here mu1 minus mu2 meaning that two groups one group mean of one study in the same study and the other group you mean the difference the mean and you will get the effect size of delta. Very simple one and this is a D the based on the big D the computing D from studies that use independent groups as I said two groups okay. Now if you come come down and you will see that computing mean difference d and g so as you can see here that normal d or calculating the unstandardized mean difference is very simple but calculating the standardized mean difference which is most important i recommend it d and g you need to calculate using sort of uh, calculation similar like this computing d and g from studies that use independent groups so there are two groups we can estimate the standardized mean difference from studies that use two independent groups. So sample mean x1, sample mean x2 and s is the standard deviation. Now finding out the s standard deviation in the group standard deviation, you can use this formula n1 minus n, s1 square, n1, n2 minus 1, s2 square. So all this n, n is the observation or sample size and s is the standard deviation and you can calculate and you can find the small Cohen's d using this formula okay now this is the one that we call the Cohen's D okay now there is another called the uh, Hedges G and Hedges G is something called the bias corrected Cohen's D standardized mean difference effect size so normally the difference between Hedges G and the Cohen's D is only the bias correction happen in the case of Hedges G but the formula is almost the same Okay. And the second one that I am going to talk about is the ratio base. For example, if your dependent variable is a binary dependent variable, for example, yes or no, this kind of dependent variable, in that case, mean difference is not suitable. In that case, we use the Riggs ratio or odds ratio. 
so risk ratio or odds ratio based on the binary data so as you can see here that risk ratio and odds ratio are the two important effect size calculation so if you go down and you will see how to calculate the risk ratio very simple the, there are two events a and c and there are number of sample size n1 and n2 risk ratio is very close to the conditional probability that we have found in the statistics very simple one and in the case of odds ratio it is a little bit different than the risk ratio odds ratio calculation is something like that uh, the the occurrence of one event okay the occurrence of one event and the occurrence of that event not happening in the sample size calculating the odds ratio odds ratio is a little bit different than the risk ratio because risk ratio is very close to the probability conditional probability in the case of odds ratio is the ratio of two odds the odds of death in the tested group would be 5 by 95 or 0 0.0525 since probability of death in the treated group is 5 by 100 the probability of life is 95 by 100 there is a nice example given over here you can easily look at this example uh, there this is the example treated and control events and non events you can find this information from this table very easily now if you have a correlation based effect size if you would like to find out the correlation based effect size the best way to calculate the correlation based effect size is the computing r and there is a called the fisher's transformation of r and this is the simple way you can calculate the estimation of correlation parameter is 1 minus r square you need to calculate the correlation value of each and every studies and put the calculation to find out the effect size based on the studies which are reporting correlation information. So if your objective of the study is to find out the correlation between the variables then I recommend you to use the correlation based effect size and the correlation based effect size usually we use the Fisher Z transformation and Fisher Z transformation value is very simple one 0.5 times ln 1 plus r divided by 1 minus r. r is the representation of the correlation coefficient. So this is how you can calculate the correlation based Fisher Z effect size. There is another nice book that is called the doing meta analysis r a hands on guide. This is a very nice book and I, I recommend you to use this book for your effect size calculation. The importance of this book is that there is an example of each and every effect size. For example, as I told you, how to find out the standardized mean difference like Cohen's D or Hedges G. Like, for example, what are the information that you require? The number of observations, mean of in intervention experimental group, the standard deviation, number of observations, the mean of control group, the standard deviation of the control group. So, informations what you need are already mentioned over here. Then, there is a nice little information with the library of sample data set given you with using the R programming to show you the same information how to calculate the standardized uh, Cohen's D or Hedges D. Okay. And in the summary also it gives you some information about how to calculate it with a nice little information like an example. Okay. And then we have discussed about the Riggs and odds ratio. In the Riggs and odds ratio also they have created a table and also they calculated with this example. With that with the sample data from the R and you can follow this to understand how they calculated the risks and odds ratio very simple odds ratio and you can see here that uh, how they calculated the odds ratio for treatment group and the control group very simple one if your data set is a binary data then I would recommend you to follow the odds ratio or risk ratio if your data is simple there is no uh, cal cal calculate uh, there is no regression or any other methodology just simple uh, descriptive statistics and mean and standard deviation then i would recommend you just use the cohen's d or hedges d to calculate your effect size okay and if it is a reported the correlation then you can use the correlation effect size and here you can see all this information are given one by one very nicely very simply so you can follow the doing meta analysis in, uh, in r this book to follow your three different types of effect size calculation now there is one last thing I would recommend you to find out the FX size variation. Now once you calculate the FX size, how do you know all the across the studies the FX size that you have calculated, 
they are heterogeneous or homogeneous in order to understand that we apply the random effect model or forest uh, random effect model or fixed effect model i discussed these things in my previous videos random effect model is more preferable because it can calculate the heterogeneity of the effect sizes across the studies very easily so random effect or fixed effect model is important to understand the effect size variation over the studies and in order to calculate the effect size you need to calculate using mean difference odds ratio or risk ratio and the correlation uh, r or fisher z correlation transformation these are the three different types of effect size calculation i hope this video is useful i recommend you to follow these two books these are the free information available online internet i will share the link in my video description box in the next couple of videos i will share all the effect size with real practical data set to demonstrate how you can calculate the data set how you can calculate using a software like jabs or comprehensive meta analysis software in order to calculate all these effect sizes and finally use the fixed effect or random effect model for variation calculation so this is the video that i recommend you to watch for your understanding the effect size calculation next couple of videos we will discuss about the application of this effect size using real and practical data set until next time thank you my dear learners i will see you in next tutorial bye bye